Now, a big day, of, big day for the markets today. Of course, uh, U.S. non-farm payroll data will be expected around 2.30 today. Keep in mind that we're a month on from when the U.S. sovereign rating, credit rating, was uh, downgraded there. This as I say, is key data. What are your expectations? Many banding about numbers of 75,000 increase for August. Yes, uh, you know, very, very big day today, um, you know, especially since you mentioned earlier, it is the first time that we've received some really key economic data out of the United States, the employment data there, since they downgraded at the beginning of August. So, it's, you know, I think all eyes and all bated breath um, waiting for that number 230. And, you know, I think all asset classes are also, you know, looking for that number to point them in which direction they'll be trading, um, you know, from this afternoon until next week or whenever the, the Fed is, is meets for two days to discuss what they're going to do about the economy. But, um, you know, we don't know what to expect. Um, you know, I think consensus is between 68,000 um, jobs created and 75,000 jobs created. But that is quite a drop from last time, which is 117,000 jobs created. You know, so you still expect a contraction there. But, you know, whether it will be less than uh, well, whether it will be a better contraction than expected or not is what I think a lot of players are betting on at the at the, the moment. The uncertainty really evident in what we see playing out with the gold counters. We see huge swings in those gold stocks this morning. Uh, Harmony, as I said, was sitting at the top of the top 40. Uh, but Anglo Gold and, and Goldfields, uh, the, although they're trading higher, we have, as I say, seen those huge swings. What are your thoughts on what's playing out uh, in the gold sector? Sure, we saw gold reaching an intraday high of about $1855 um, $1 um, today. So it's come back a little bit off there, but it just goes to show the volatility in the trading that's going on there. Um, perhaps gold, um, uh, gold fields and Anglo Gold Ashanti would be the more popular ones. So we've seen a lot of swings there in and out of positive territory when it's 1% down and then, the, you know, half an hour later it's 1% up. But yeah, as you mentioned, uh, Harmony has been steady um, above the 2% mark. So, you know, I think there's still some uh, go, uh, gold is certainly still bid. It's still up quite a bit since the beginning of August. It's got risen up about nearly just over $200. $200. So it's still quite bid, bid the gold price. So we'll see a lot of activity going there. But after half past two when the non-farm payroll data comes out, it's anybody's game. You know, we could see gold really, you know, should it be disappoint, gold will definitely um, rise quite a bit, you know, maybe challenge that 1900 um, level that was um, made um, earlier on in, in August. Or, um, you know, it could come back quite a bit, you know, and um, when the risk on trade starts to happen, um, should the numbers, dis um, you know, um, be, be better than expected. Let's take a look at what's taking place on the currency front. Uh, we see the dollar gaining some traction ahead of the release of that data. Rand still trading above 7 Rand despite closing below seven rand last night and of course uh, a competitive bank of Nedbank coming out saying it's time to be buying dollars that is a sign that they see a risk here to stay for now what are your thoughts on where we see currencies going today yeah, yeah there also currencies I think are, are holding its breath. I mean, like I said, all asset classes, including currencies, are holding their breaths waiting for this afternoon. Should it disappoint, I think we're going to be seeing um, it, it challenging the 708 um, you know, to 710 area uh, as a knee-jerk reaction initially, maybe stabilize towards next week um, you know, a little bit and come back, but still above the 7, uh, seven rand level. And it, should it be positive, you know, another knee-jerk reaction where we can see it going down to past the, six, the uh, 696, um, you know, critical a critical um, support level and going down further to maybe 690 you know so it's any it could go any ways and um, you know I wish I had um, a magic wand or a magic crystal ball that could tell me where to come up so I can give you more concrete answers but yeah. it really is so dependent on what comes out later then let's t let's take a look at a uh, specific stock news that has come out today Aspen releasing an encouraging trading update there saying that uh, earnings per share likely to rise uh, between 18 and 22 percent for the full year uh, that stock is uh, showing some positive uh, uh, reaction to that news there and of course considered a defensive at a time like this. Yes, absolutely. You know, these uh, pharmaceutical stocks are very defensive, um, especially in markets like this where, you know, there's a risk off trades at the moment going on. So, you know, they will be better rewarded today. I think it's had a very strong trading day. It was up over 2% earlier on today also. You know, it's a very strong trading day and very strong results also, considering or is it, or after this, um, having taken into account the Sigma pharmaceuticals acquisition that they were engaged with within the financial year. So if that is um, the adjusted thereafter, you know, it's very, very strong. And they're being uh, justly rewarded today. SAB Miller trading uh, at this stage down 0.4%, 257.10 around 10 cents, questioning the financial statements that have been released by Foster's, uh, questioning the fact that we saw beer sales and volumes falling for the first time in a decade. What is your take on uh, the, the 
the play between what's taking place between Fosters and SAB at this stage after they rejected that bid? Well, just to take it back a little bit, when they initially are announced, I think, you know, market players took a, lo a, lo a little bit of time to, you know, kind of digest this um, takeover and, uh, and have a look at it. But, you know, seeing the reaction and the tra from the trading perspective today, it's only down 0.4%, as you mentioned, you know, which, which on a day like today, we would expect it to be down far more. And it just goes to show that, you know, some players are actually liking the fact that SAB is questioning this and start trying to stave off maybe having to pay a higher price. It is a $10 billion bill that is now with the shareholders, you know, after the board of, um, of uh, Foster's um, rejected it and uh, they're questioning they were, they've got some reasonable questions there in terms of the financial statement the forward-looking financial statements whether they are m misleading or as deceptive um, you know as, as what they think they are and also the counting standards used to determine the, the some of the financial findings uh, the financial statements they particularly the net debt levels you know so they're trying to make sure that um, they don't uh, ha have to end up um, overpaying for this bid should the uh, shareholders sh um, hold off and say okay look after these things, after what the Foster Board has said, we want a little bit more than what you're offering. So they're trying to have a proper fight there and, and, and you know, and uh, question what um, what Foster's is now saying. So it's with the takeover panel at, in Australia, and I think um, it has been well received so far in the market for them not to, to be down only ever so slightly.